Hey everybody. I see some here. Hmm, strange. Okay, look like we're tracking. Running some tests. And let's go ahead and share it on a few pages to get the word out. We got a lot to cover tonight. Whosoever will, let them come. Alright, I guess that covers it all. If not, we'll deal with it then. Alright. Alright, happy Wednesday everybody. Praise the Lord. How are each and every one of you? Peace be unto you in the name of the Lord our Savior, Jesus the Christ, and His Father, Jehovah. And I just want to take this opportunity to cover another lesson tonight in our continuing series on sin. Sin is going to be the topic for a while, guys. So strap your backpack on, put your parachute on, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. And it may stumble on a couple, a few toes while we're at it. So if those who don't know me, my name is Reverend Dr. Antonio Arnold, a.k.a. Beast Mode. I am an ordained minister, I've been a pastor, I've been an associate pastor, associate minister, assistant pastor, chaplain, and uh, oh, I can't even think of the last one. <laughs> Supply pastor too on the Presbyterian Reformed Theology side at the house as well. And I'm also an author. Please purchase this book. Get this book today. We are living in the finished work of Christ. God draw, Jesus save, and the Holy Spirit sealed. This is a very great book. My wife and I co-author this book together. It will bless you. It will open your ears and eyes to a lot of things that you find traditionally that's out of order according to Scripture, and it has nothing to do with emphasis to be placed emphasis on it that is not connected to Scripture. And a lot of emphasis. We got a lot of emphasis on our stuff religious wise that has nothing to do with Scripture. You want to get this book. Okay, you also want to get this book called, I got so many books here, Breaking the Chains, there's a lot of chains going, I got to break the chains, a bondage of the tradition of the church, the breaking the chains, a bondage of the tradition of the church, we got a lot, it's like when Pharisees time, we got them Pharisees laws still today, that has nothing to do with scripture, get this book, it's a, it, this book right here, compliments this book so if I was saying this is part one part two 
You owe it to yourself to get this get your copy and this copy too. Hurricane Katrina I, from my experience, in New Orleans in, 19, in 2005, oh, almost 20, 20 years ago, 19 years ago, I was deployed to New Orleans right in the midst of a storm. Been to also been to Florida for Hurricane Ivan, Hurricane Floyd, and Hurricane Katrina. So I have it. They'll tell you my my book would share my military story, not all of it, because some of this stuff is uh, according to secured information. So I'm not going to talk about every nuke and granny what I've done, but just to give you an idea of my experience, I did over 22 years, and which reminds me, I need to put it in another packet. But anyway, this is my books, guys. Get your copy today. Get your copy today. You can go on authorhouse.com, amazon.com, and there's a whole list of Google Store. We also have walmart.com. Get your book today, okay? And learn what, what I have learned, come to learn, okay? A little bit about my background. I hold a doctorate in divinity. I graduated from the Federal Ray Biblical Institute. And you're going to probably say, what? What's that? That's not an institute. Yes, it is. It is. really is. And also graduate. Hold on to your hats. Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary, where I hold an advanced master in divinity with an emphasis on professional ministry, 111 hours worth of work. I also hold a master of religious education. Education is very big to me, very dear to me. Organizing a school institution more bigger than a big Bible study, okay? Also, graduated also with a, math, with a Master of Art in Theological Study. Theology is the Word of God. So, anybody tell you that's not, it's not they don't understand theology. So, those are the major things I have. I also have a Bachelor of Theology, another Master of Divinity from another institution. I always study, and I also have a Bachelor of Individualized Study with an emphasis in Electrical Engineer, Minor Military Science. Well, I was a commissioned officer. I just got recommissioned not too long years ago as an army chaplain. Okay, prior to my injury taking hold of me and a whole bunch of other political stuff that I decided it's uh, time to move on. So that's a little bit about myself. Or my my wife is the co-author of this book. She helped me with my other books, make sure my grammar was correct. And a lot of times I was under stress because when I was writing the book, God told me to write it. I was uh, preparing for deployment to Afghanistan, which didn't happen, thank the Lord. But I was prepared for it. I was being mobilized. So it's just one of those things, guys. You have to be ready, and you have to do what needs to be done. And anybody also, anybody who's called to the chaplain ministry, I want you to really get this book. Because this book's going to save your career. Take it from one who's been through your, the journey that you have gone through, or going through, about to go through. Go ahead and get you this book because this book will open your eyes of what are your rights as a chaplain. Okay? Give you some insight about the military chaplaincy. Okay? As, as well as chaplaincy for hospitals. Also, you know, your constitutional right, First Amendment. All right? So, let's dive in. There's a lot of uh, theological terminology in here, there's a lot of Hebrew and Greek terminology. That what you will find in scripture that will help you understand what the scripture is really talking about. They also cover a lot of great detail. These two books right here. We're going to about, you know, about your pastor, leadership, about leadership. You know, your pastor's really called to be a pastor. I mean, false prophet, what's the things to be looking for under a false prophet? You know, they ain't a false religion. Things that you need to understand. Definitions that also have scripture. So you definitely want to get a copy of both of these books, plus Hurricane Katrina and I. It will bless you. It will give you some great insight. A lot of folks have already got copies. I, I mean, I've done a book sign. I'm looking to do a book sign in probably the near future. Uh, as time goes on, I probably after my, way down the road after my surgery. Uh, but anyway, I want you to get those books. Get your copy today. And if I have to, let me go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and do this and do a couple of things for you. Let me do this for you. I'm going to type in the website. So you can find it. All you have to do is type in we are living in the finished work of Christ. You'll see our multiple things out there available through our Google search. And Hurricane Katrina as well as breaking the chain of bondage of the tradition of the church. 
You'll find it all there, guys. I'm searchable. Type in my name, you'll find me. You won't find my wife, but you will definitely find me. Let me go ahead and do some work here, guys. Cause I'm gonna do. A, there's a lot of work to be done. I wish I, I should have prepared a little bit like I did last night, but I think we're gonna go through it. Uh, I wanted to go rather quickly and give you some understanding. And I will be taking my time with this. All right, and let me get this right here. So, if you like a book, go to either Google or go to We Are Living in the Finished Work of Christ dot com. Okay, We Are Living in the Finished Work of Christ dot com. That is the name of the website. Um, you'll be you'll you'll get a greater understanding of our purpose, what we are all about, and that that's where you can order the book, or you can go to We Are Living in the Finished Work of Work dot com. That is where you're gonna find our purpose, our mission statements, where we, why we're doing what we're doing, a little bit about myself, my wife history, and why we're so fired up about sharing the truth of the gospel of truth to each and every creature. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to share. And you make the decision. You make the decision yourself how far you want to go. Okay? And I'm here to tell you, it will set you free. This book, will, this publication will set you away from bondage, spiritual bondage, demonic forces. Of course, there's demons in there and all sorts of things, even things that you didn't know of. But it will definitely open your ears, open your eyes, and help you see clearly. And things, like I said, we want to talk about sin. We want to dive into that. Um, let me go ahead and get these last two up here so you'll know it's there, okay? I have another book in mind. I have already titled it. It's going to give you some history, get some background in what a lot of things is in regards to a story I cannot tell you right now. But you'll find out. Okay, and let's see here. There we go. All three books are there. Uh huh. Airborne. All right. Look like we're tracking. All right. So, now I hope my wife is nearby and she's there. Say hi, honey. Love you. Okay, let's get started. We're going to cover another of our topics, like I said, on sin. And I'll tell you, sin has, has, been, has definitely been on full throttle in the last few decades, okay? And I just wanted to uh, make you aware what these sins are. And that and encourage you to prepare yourself and do your due diligence according to God's will and His word to get out of that situation. Let me take off my hat. Let's go into word of prayer. Father in the heavens, we come before you tonight to ask for our, a super blessing upon each and every one who has an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say. We ask you, Lord, that you will bless each and every person who is listening in online. Listening in on YouTube, listening in on Facebook, listening in on Instagram, and all other social media. Lord God, we just ask for your presence to be upon us. That your word will be in us. And that your grace will be upon us. Lord, we ask for grace upon the nation that has sinned against you. We ask for mercy upon a world government called the United Nations that has sinned against you. As well as the European Union. Lord God, we ask for a change of pace, a change of mind, a change of focus, to focus on the place where we have lost relationship with our first love, and that first love is you, Lord. And Lord God, we ask for that your divine will will be upon each and every person to have a change of mind, a change of heart, and that their mind will be in you, Christ. The word, your word said, let this mind be in you. 
as it is also in Christ Jesus. And we ask for that mind to be upon each and every hearer of the word. And be, they, once they become hearer of the word, Lord God, we ask them that they become doers of the words, not by flair, not by smile, not by, but be doers of and the committed to salvation. And Lord, we thank you for healing, your saving grace, for your son Jesus Christ that you had sent to die for us, who are from our wicked, who are to, who are to convey a lesson upon us to turn from our wicked ways so you can hear our, heal our lands. And this as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Hope y'all like my new shirt my wife bought me. It's called Freedom is Never Free. And that's the truth. Freedom is never free. I, between the Army and the Air Force, through the Air National Guard, the Army Reserve, Active Army, Active Reserve, Active Duty. Full time, guys. No joke. Guys, I'm here to tell you, we paid, we bled, we've been on standby, we, we out here in the rain, in the snow, in the cold, in the heat, in the dryness for you. Okay? What you take for granted is not free. It's not free. Nothing's free. And salvation, the only thing that's free was salvation that's open to you. Because it will already been paid for. Alright? It's already been paid for. All you have to do is confess and come on in and believe. So with that guys, let's go straight to it. And direct, go ahead and dive in this issue in regards to sin. Guys, what we're going to talk about today, 10 things on topics. We're going to talk about, I'm not going to go ahead, I wish I could voice talk it here. We're going to talk about, let me go ahead and type in sin, semicolon. Okay, we're going to talk about making leagues with heathens. Y'all know what a heathen is? You're about to find out today. With heathens. Okay? Making a covenant with them. Refusing to destroy the altar. Those items of worship with pagans. Immoral. to idols let me see here I can't see very well so I'll bear with me and bowing to God so I'm talking about the little G many of you bowing to false gods and let's see what we got here? We got a little bit to go. Turning quickly out of the way. And what do we mean by that? Breaking the commandments. Corruption or corrupting selves. Okay, God covered a lot. And there's so much more that I cannot cover in this one few hours, this hour or so segment. 
serving God. G-O-D-S. We're talking about these inclusive gods. Two more. Selfishness. Stubbornness. Did you know stubbornness is a sin? I mean, you don't even know this. That your own human nature is the thing that's main thing that's calling, pulling you down. <laughs> all right. Think I can have it all. So, are we ready to get started, guys? Are we ready to get started, brothers and sisters? I have my coffee right here. Got a bottle of water right here that's nice and still cold, still cool. All right. And we just thank God for the blessing and opportunity to be here. So, let's get started. And because we covered a lot on the first one of the first three sessions, we talk about eating of the tree of life, of, of knowing knowledge of good and evil, uh, general wickedness. We talk about drunkenness, defiance of God. We talk about deceitfulness. We talk about hatred. We talk about sodomy and homosexuality. We talk about incest. We talk about taking advantage of others, which is a sin as well. We talked about lying. We talked about jealousy. Rape. We talk about that. Plotting, murder, envy, you know, mockery, kidnapping, adultery, 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 you know, one worshiping, one cheating, murmuring is a sin. Rebelling is a sin. Bearing false witnesses. That's a lot of that been going on in rampantly. That is a sin too. Did you know that? Keep going. Uh-huh. Blasphemy. Despising God. Breaking the Sabbath. Provoking God. Covetousness. Robbery. Forsaking God. Rejoicing of God. Rejecting of God. Uh, breaking God's covenant was the last thing we covered. And like I said, we're going to cover these 10 items of sin. Each time we get together, we're going to hit 10, 10, either 10 a day or 10 every other day. That's how it's going to go. I'm not going to hit it all 370 at once. Can I get a witness? Hmm, something strange going on here. Satan don't want me here. <laughs> Boy. All right. All right. Something weird going on here. Three times. What in the world? My goodness. Okay. That's all right. We're on fire. So, for the first task, we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss breaking, I mean, making league with heathen. Let's go to the book of Judge, Judges, book of Judges. Okay. So, we're going to go to the book of Judges. Kings, Chronicle, Esra. Let's see. Well, I gotta give me some new markers. And we know the book of Judges, that's Nehemiah, Esra. Well, I'm gonna tear this back. I had this book so long. Now bear with me. I ain't got it all together. I just jump right in. So I'm gonna jump right on in. But once I get going, y'all just need me to be alright. Exodus, let me get out here. Home you all human conduct, creed, and opinion shall be tried. Okay, that's Joshua. There it is. Right after Joshua. And we got to go to going to Judges. J U D G E S. If you watch it from overseas, uh, turn to the book of Judges, chapter 2. We're going to hit verse. Um, we're going to go break bread with verse 2. 
chapter 2 verse 2 and we're talking about making leagues with heathens and before I get going good how many of you know what a heathen is hmm what is a heathen what is a heathen? Hmm? What is a heathen? Heathens are known for many things. They are known as pagan worshipers. Okay? They are known as Gentiles. Who are don't have no relationship with Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus the Christ. Gentiles are non-believers. There are pagan worshipers. Heathens are infidels. They were idolaters. They means they worship idols. They are idolaters. There were unbelievers or non-believers, and the proper definition is a person who does not belong to a why the hell religion or faith, especially one who is not a Christian or Jew. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, in Islam, they call non-believers infidels, but the Bible says if we don't take care of our own, we are worse than an infidel. So, what that said about you? What that say about? Heathens. You're talking about people who are the worst categories who have no relationship with God. Atheists are considered heathens. People who show up and don't believe in what they're practicing or believe in what they're worshiping are heathens. Okay? So, let's turn to the word. Now that we understand about heathens, and the Bible tells us not to make leagues with heathens. Need to make an association with heathens. Let's go to he does the judge chapter two verse two. But I'm gonna start with verse one. Is that okay? Alright? And it says, And the angel of the Lord came upon from Gagal to Bochin and said, I made you to go out of Egypt and have brought you into the land which I swear unto your fathers and I said I will never break my covenant with you. That's verse 1. And that's, that's re-emerging re the promise that was given unto Moses. And the word says in verse 2 it says and ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Now, this is a question, guys. Now, they're talking to the people of Israel. The angel of the Lord came, and he prays in judgment, okay? The people were, were free from the bondage of Egypt, okay? And we're talking about since Moses and since Joshua, the people have turned, begin to turn from God, Elohim, okay? A almighty God. They turn from God, like they're doing today. And as time goes on, generation after generations, they worshiping other gods. Now, the word said to them not to be league, be no league, make no league or agreement or live in a habitation or being with them. Be with these what? Do not do league with the inhabitants of the land. Throw down their altars. Their altars are the they have plenty of altars. They will have altars all over the place on that land. And they were worshiping idols. So of course they're gonna have statues, monuments, kind of like you got today. You got statues. Uh, and they worship these are uh, these these idols, these they're called idols. Now I want you to Google what's and find out what the word idol means, okay? So they worship these people, worship these idols. God gave us this land. We're not supposed to be associating ourselves with these infidels because they worship idols. So you throw down their altars, 
but you have not obeyed my voice. Have you not have you done this? Why have you not have ye done this? In other words, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you obeyed my words? Why haven't you not been obedient and broken these evil association with these individuals? And today we're associating with satanic individuals who are in satanic uh, uh, who are part of the satanic organization who are satanic churches and satanic ministries in the name of calling themselves in the name of Jesus how dare you in in because their actions speak all of the words let me tell you something you put an LGBT flag on top of a church, a building we call a church building, and you call that inclusion, or your constitution or your bylaws is now inclusion, diversity, equality, it becomes a pagan what's your place of Satan. And I have nothing to do with you. I am not going to associate myself with you. If I don't believe that you are within the word of God, you're out there worshiping pastors, you're out there worshiping Baal, you're out there worshiping LGBTQ, ABCDEFG, you're out there committing heinous crimes by worshiping idols, figures in the building, I don't want no part of it. I don't want no part of it. The first the Ten Commandments say we're not supposed to have any images of heavenly or the love and heaven above. Then we ain't supposed to have any of these things. But we got images all over the place. And now more important, we got a, we have these fundraisers for these pews. Put your name on the pew stuff. God don't want no part of that. And I'm not going to have no part of that either. If you ask me why I'm a symbol, why I don't assemble with certain groups, is because they're still out there not living in according to God's will. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You're going to vote LGBTQ? You support your whole congregation support that? Your, so your whole congregation support abortion, a woman's right to choose? I don't want no part of you. I'll leave you alone. I have nothing to do with your pagan temples. I want no part of it. I am not going to make association with individuals who can live uh, uh, living in sin. Con and continue to do so. Alright? I don't even associate with a lot of my uh, a lot of my friends anymore because they're still living a life of sin. I don't want no part of that. You want to be a drunken fool? Now I still drink. Don't get me wrong. I drink my wine. I have my drinks maybe once in the blue moon or every six months. That's nothing to everyday drunk drunkenness. And the Bible talks about drunkenness. And the body, and the body, and the, and the Bible talks about being a Bible, being a bunch of alcoholics. I'm not going to be a drunken. If I do it, I do it at home. I'm going to bed, and that's it. Wine was used in celebration of the marriage. God turned Jesus turned water into wine. Why would the heck he do that if it wasn't a purpose? So. Why does the communion have wine in it? Why are we using grapefruit juice for? It's not even real juice. It's not even ferment. Point of the matter is, if you're worshiping idols, and I mean worship, I'm not saying you, you're this organization in the United States or you're a hospital, you got a little cross, red cross, you got a tall over there, and you're not worshiping something, somebody just represents something. I'm fine with that. Okay, don't... But you worshiping like these satanics with these stone temples, temple, these temples and these statues they building and put in front of Congress or congressional halls of government. And it makes you wonder who's in charge. You make you wonder who is in charge. They are. The, Satan is in charge of this world government. The United Nations, the EU, and the United States of America, and the rest of the known Western world, including South America. Each one, and you read my book, We Are li Breaking the Chain of Bondage of Tradition of the Church, I'm telling you, you'll learn laws that have been passed that you've been sleeping on the job on, have been passed right under your nose 
that will lock you in prison, that will also, uh, that laws they pass to support gay same-sex marriages. And y'all sleeping on the job, Pastor. Y'all been sleeping on the job. You vote for these guys, these, these dem demons, to pass these policies. I don't care about the individual. It's the policy I care for. If you want to vote for a king, make sure that king is born again and the past policy that will not inhibit our Christian values or our Jewish values. But if you're doing that, you're, still, you're worshiping Baal. So I cannot, I cannot affiliate with heathens. I'm just, I'm sorry, I can't do that. That's why you don't see me hanging out. That's why you don't see me going this place and going that place because I'm not going to be set up for failure. Come on, hang out. Let's have a couple of drinks before you can set me up for failure. You're not my true friend. You should be home with your wife. You should be home with your kids. You should be teaching them righteousness. You should be reading the word of God for yourself and study. And then get with a pastor or bishop who is thoroughly furnished in understanding and rightly dividing the word of truth. Because if you get one of these guys who are not well equipped, they're going to send you in the wrong direction. And you go with these guys who are who are going around doing cartwheels and backflips and cartwheels, have their a rainbow flag out, talking about God is love. I already explained to you just yesterday what, what real love is all about. And then you got to do you you getting with these guys here who's not teaching you anything but giving you a lot of song and dance. And they got forty thousand congregation right there and a million followers. But they don't want to listen to what I have to share because I'm sharing Bible. Just like another man y'all laugh at who shares Bible. So making leads. What in the world am I getting all this bing? I don't understand. <laughs> Somebody's keep binging me. I hope this is important, but uh, we're right in the middle of a lesson. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. That's fine. Oh, bless your heart. All right. So, there's something I was, someone I was hoping earlier. We got to stay focused on God's word, his principles, his laws, his righteousness. We cannot afford to associate ourselves with unbelievers. You get folks who you work with it every day. That's why I push entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, so you will not depend on the job and not be influenced. Influenced by unbelievers. Or you become like I said, you don't have to depend on these colleges and universities who are indoctrinating you. I mean college and university has changed dramatically since my time. And I have ran across a lot of heathens in my life who don't believe in Jesus Christ, who don't believe, want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, do want nothing to do with uh, Elohim, the Father, Jehovah, who has nothing to do with righteousness, who just want to say, I'm a good person. Did Jesus, did Jesus say, and somebody asked Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, you're good, and what was Jesus' reaction? Look it up. Look it up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move forward to the next one. I hope they answer that. Don't make leads with these heathens. You know, I know a group of people who are followers of Jesus Christ or follow Jehovah Elohim, and they do not, they make it a practice, just like the Orthodox Church, to not associate themselves with heathens. And I believe the Catholic Church to them, if you are a heretic, they don't want nothing to do with you either. They'll speak to you, but they may not have a close relationship with you. And you wonder why they don't have a close relationship? Because they consider you a heretic or a heathen. Many Orthodox Jews consider you heathens. So if you're not in the right standing God, I'm not being prejudiced. I'm not, I'm not being hateful. I love you. But I love righteousness more than I love secularism. If you get understand what I mean. Okay? So, we can't make leads with heathens. Judge chapter 2. So I'm going also, staying with Judge chapter 2, with the word of God said, you know, you disobey God, you're rejecting uh, the, 
<laughs> hold up right now. Hold up. Refusing to destroy the altar. Let's go ahead right there. Many of us people are refusing to destroy the altar in their life. Totally refuse to destroy the altar in their lives. Still in chapter 2, verse 2. Again, chapter 2, verse 2 talks about ask the question. And God and the angel of the Lord God said, And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of the land. That's the first rule. That's one of the rules. You cannot associate with them. Okay? Ye shall throw down the altar, but you have not. You have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? The word of God is asking us a question. Why we have yet to throw down that altar of infirmities. The altar of Babylonian gods. Baal. Why are we still worshiping individuals or worshiping bishops and pastors? That's not, or they call them anointed. There's only one anointed. That's Jesus Christ. It's right in the Bible. He's the anointed one. We walk around putting say anointed, anointed, and keep doing it, anointed, 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 anointed. No, it's only one. It's, there's no only one Messiah. And there's only one King David and King Solomon. Period. Unless you run for president, and then the, the priests, whoever your priest is, will say, we're going to anoint you president of the United States. But that has being a believer has nothing to do with being you being anointed. You being a father, you are a child of God, and that's it. Now, I know many of y'all may disagree, and that's fine. I'm fine with that. Hey, I'm fine with that. That's fine. But you have to give the accountability on that deal. So, refusing to destroy the altar. Many of you got these pagan altars in your house. These false religious images in your house. Got to go. Many of you got all these other things that's in your house. That doesn't belong. The, you got men hugging men both naked. Statues in your house. Get it out of there. Women squeezing each other naked in the house on a statue. Could be a lamp, could be a, a stand where you have your waterfall fountain. Get that thing out of there. That's disgusting. You got images of false religions, false gods. You got images of Satan, Satan, of an image of Satan with a donkey, with a, a, a goat's head and a, and a fork and bat's wing. Get it out of there. And your job could be an altar of worship. Could you put your job before God? A lot of you have. A lot of you have. Put worldly stuff above God. No, I, think, I don't think about God no more. That's the problem. Look at our laws. Look at our laws that we have lived on the land today. Y'all worshiping Obama. You're worshiping Biden. You're worshiping the uh, What's this other guy name? The Clintons? You worshiping all these folks. I know y'all not worshiping Trump because y'all can't stand him. But you are worshiping CNN. You're worshiping MSNBC. And you're worshiping Fox News and all these other news media. That's feeding you confusion and hatred. And I'm going to be up front with you. That's what they're doing to you. Let me get a little bit more light. There we go. You can see my beautiful smile. But God already told us to separate ourselves. We're supposed to be holy. Holy means set apart. We're supposed to be set apart to do his work, the work that he called us to do. And that is to share truth. Now, you are not required as a Christian, supposed to be highly trained, you're supposed to be trained though, you're supposed to be taught. You can be a pastor. Everybody thinking that you got to be a pastor to tell somebody about Jesus. And that's not true. You can be a regular believer and so excited about the truth that you want to share it. And you should share it. I've seen children share. I see that don't make them pastors. 
They don't make him bishop. I mean, we got to have a title and a position now. I mean, that, that, that makes no sense. But I just want to throw that in there. But Judges chapter 2, verse 2 told us, why are asked us a question? Why are we refusing to destroy the altar of, of things that God does not want us to participate? Now, if you're worshiping football and basketball more than your God, then that becomes an altar. That television becomes an altar. If you, you are, are stuck on that TV each and every day, more so than reading your Bible, and you want to watch football uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, that becomes a God. That becomes your television, becomes an altar. Get rid of it. Sustain from it for a few months and get in this word. You want to hear some sports? You want to learn something? Here it is. All the volumes you need. All right, let's go ahead and move to the next one. So I already covered, I already covered for you, making leagues with leagues with heathen. Break, break them leagues. Break them treaties with them heathens. Break away the best you can from the heathen lifestyle. Don't even have a conversation if it's not about God. Well, I'm an atheist. I, I don't... I don't, I don't believe in your Jesus Christ, so don't talk about it. I can't talk to you no more, bro. I love you enough to tell you about Jesus and his saving grace and the blood that he shed for you. But if I can't say anything about Jesus at work, I need to find me a job. Or I can't say that I can't, I can't assemble with you any further. I cannot associate with you any further. I wish you the well, but I can't do it. You got to do it, brothers and sisters. It's about time. You've got to do it. Stop worshiping television. Stop worshiping politicians. Because the nation is dividing to pieces because of what you're watching on television. It's brainwashing. It really is. And indoctrination in you. It's refusing to destroy the altar. Making leads with heathen. And here's another one. Number three. For today, immoral acts to idols. Let's go there. Let's go here. We're still on chapter two of Judges. That's that's cool, man. We're still on chapter two of Judges, and we're gonna go straight to seventeen. Oh, I'm gonna start with fifteen. I mean sixteen. No, I'm going to start with 15. Let me write, make a note, annotate that. Because it's important. You get the whole story. So we're going to go with 2, 15 through 17, if that's okay. I know where they're going with this, but I, I think it's important you get the whole story. And that way you'll be no confusion. I'm going to go, with, matter of fact, I'll go to 18. I may go to 18. All right, I'm going to type it in here for you. Chapter 2, verse 15 through 18. All right, let's go ahead and read what the Lord, what the Holy Spirit have to say. The Comforter. You, what? You didn't know the Bible, the Word of God is the Comforter? You didn't know it's, it's the Comforter that guides us to all our understanding? Yes. You didn't know this was the Holy Spirit? The Word that you know that the Word is Spirit. Let's go to 15. Man, I should go start with 14. I'm going to start with 13. This is good. I'm going to start with 13. And they forsake the Lord and serve Baal and Ashtar, Roth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers. And that spoiled them. And he spoiled them into the hands of their enemies round about. So that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Verse 15, whithersoever they went out, the hands of the Lord was against them for evil. And as the Lord had said, as, as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. 
Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hands of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto the judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeyed the communicates of the Lord, but they did not so. And the Lord raised them up judges. Them the Lord was, the, was with the judges and delivered them out of the hands of their enemies. All the day of the judge for it repented the Lord because of their groaning by reason of them that oppressed them and vaxed them. You know, you brought this on yourself. But anyway, here it is, guys. The Lord is already angry. Why? Because they have turned from him. They have turned to wicked institutions. They have turned to wicked lifestyle. They have turned to wicked ideology. They have turned to wicked religions. They have turned to false religions that call themselves Christians. They have called, turned away from God and worshipped Satan. They have turned from God and turned from him altogether. But this is what God did. He raised up judges. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hands of those that spoiled them. Because right now, guys, the world has been spoiled by Satan. You've been, been spoiled by Lucifer. You're really not spoiled right now, except for the folks in Ukraine and Russia. You're spoiled. You're being spoiled by wickedness and committing wickedness. You know why? Because you totally reject the word of God, you totally reject God Elohim, and you totally reject his only begotten son, who is the one and true Messiah, Jesus the Christ. You're sure, almost sure. Y'all reject him. He said you're going to reject him. He knew they were going to reject him. He knew you were going to reject this. Chris, this thing called, we call the call outs. You're going to find out why. If you look in the previous video, you'll find out why I call it the call outs. We have lost the American people. And those of you false preachers have lost your way. Many of you over time have lost your way. Your building still saved. Thus, thus Baptist. Thus, thus Pentecostal. Thus, thus Lutheran. Thus, thus Methodist. Thus, thus Catholic. Thus, thus whatever. You have fallen short of the glory of God, and you have separated by your actions from His goodness. I'm talking about the congregations. When I talk about church, I'm talking about the congregation. I'm not talking about a building. The building is not the church. You are. The building is not the church. You are. Look it up. We're not talking about buildings' names. We're talking about you that identify with those buildings. With the title on it. Which represents the congregation. The Lord is very angry. The Lord is not pleased with us. I'm using this title, but I'm going to give it his name. Yahweh is not pleased. His son who died on the cross for us is not pleased. And he's coming to judge us. As he already judging us now. And I'm afraid that the United States, when it goes to war against Soviet Union, and I'm still calling it the Soviet Union. I'm a war, Cold War veteran who served in the army to stand up against the Soviet Union and its atrocities and stand up against fascism, which is nationally socialist. That's why I put the uniform on. Care about the money? I want to stop the spread of communism. And communism now spread ahead already. And my father was right when he told me when I was 15 years old, 
that we will be like the Soviet Union. And guess what we are? You guys don't know it because you're not pushing against the grain. You're not doing your job. Because had you were to do your job, you will see communism in this United States full force in front of you. I know what I'm talking about. But you continue to be spoiled. Every, hey, lights on. Running water. You got bottled water you can buy at the store. I mean, you got water that's free. Free water that's now you got to pay for. You know, I've done water purification for three and a half years for the Air Force, Air National Guard. So I have full time. So I know what I'm talking about. This civil engineering. And you guys comfortable with your wine and your coffee and beverages and steaks and, you know, pork ribs and having a good old time. And you're spoiled. Rotten. You've been totally deceived because you're no longer on the mark. You're off target. Many of you are off target. You've got your target on something else that has nothing to do with you. That has not the one that you're supposed to have your target on. You're off target and you're not even witnessing Jesus Christ. You're not witnessing Jehovah. You're not witnessing his saving grace. You got there chasing witches and warlocks to join them. You're chasing them, but yet you're 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 edifying them at the same time. If you believe in abortion, that's that's my friend is uh, sacrifice, blood sacrifice. I don't care what you call it. You do believe in LGBTQ? That's Sodom and Gomorrah. That's a, that's abomination of God's entire hatred. You think that was good, you think now it's evil. I mean, you do, you want evil, you want things that's e evil, that is now good. Because you want to be acceptable. We're not here to be acceptable, ladies and gentlemen. We're not here to be, we're here on a mission. That's it. 2,000 years, for the first 15, 1,800 years, nobody liked us. People were persecuting us. People were locking true believers up. People who were principality and power and position, kings, royal families, people who are lords in their own territory. They call themselves lords. They would go L English on you. And yet they were persecuting believers because the believer was focused on it. What do you think so many people came to this country back in the early days? They wanted to get away from religious persecution. But now religious persecution is over here and you don't even see it. Get up in front of a public forum that's sponsored by the U.S. government, sponsored by your state, Department of Education, and I dare you to do an invocation in Jesus' name. I dare you to do it. I double dare you to do it. I dare you to prosthesize, witness Christ Jesus and his goodness to each and every person while you're in that government function. I dare you to do that. You won't. Because prosthesizing in this country is illegal. I can't be a chaplain in a hospital prosthesizing. Proclaiming God's goodness to each and every patient. Why? Because they have to ask for it. What if they, what can they, how can they ask for something they don't even know? Wrong is now right. And right is now wrong. You can't even correct your own children. Because they're under the control of the Nazi party. Oh, I'm sorry, the Communist Party. I'm oh, sorry, the, the, the Federal Party. You do that in Nazi Germany, you get arrested. Sent to the concentration camp. You do that in the Soviet Union, you get sent to the Gulag. Now, they'll, they'll correct you in court, or they'll have you locked up. Go ahead and do some prosthesis in public schools. I dare you. You'll get kicked out of school or you get kicked off the premises and if you keep on doing it, you're going to get locked up. So you got to get rid of those altars. you got to disassociate yourself with heathens. you got to stop this immoral acts of uh, to the idols. you got to stop immoral, immoral acts. you got to cease and desist, guys. God give you an opportunity. And he already said, whoever they went up with, the hands of the Lord was against them for the what? Evil. As the Lord, capital L said, has said, as the Lord has sworn unto them, 
and they were greatly distressed. That means y'all was upset. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hands of those that had, of those that had spoiled them. He raised judges who were set apart, and I'm glad they didn't have a new modernized judges now, because I'm a judge. Now there's no judges now. They all died out. Just like the prophets. But here's the thing, guys. Judges, the judges delivered the people away from the spoilers who are oppressing them and confusing them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. And they went uh, a whoring after what? Little gods, little G O D, and bow down to themselves unto them. They turn quickly out of the way which their fathers have walked in. We have definitely America, United States, Europe have walked away from the path our grandmother, our grandfathers, our great grandfather, our great grandmother, our great great grandfather, great great grandmother. We have stepped away from a path of hope. Now we follow the path of destruction. And I'm here to tell you guys there's a consequence for that. And I'm here to tell you guys there's going to be a consequence to this nation, the United States of America, the land that I love. This land will be judged. You think we're going to have victory in Europe? We're going to lose. First we're going to be winning and then we're going to lose. Why? Because God's going to hand the victory to our enemies. Unless we repent. If my people who are called by my name who are humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way. We have the United States of America. All the powers, principalities and powers that are sitting in the White House, sitting in those directors, those government heads, those administrative heads, they all got control of every nuke and thing of our lives. And they lead us to a heathen lifestyle. Look at your policies. Look at your policies for uh, public schools. Look at your policies for universities. Look at your policy at your job. Look at your policy as a human being, as a citizen of this country. You can find out the whole world changed. You know, you're my age, you can find out the whole world has changed. The whole government changed. Every four years a new government takes over. And each time it gets worse and worse. Amen. I hope y'all getting something out of this because I'm telling the truth. We got to refuse to destroy those altars. We got to cease doing those immoral acts too. Worshiping those idols. Even those idols on television. Talking about uh, American idols. That's blasphemy. American idols? That statement alone sends chills to my bones. Bowing down to God. Judge 7 to 17. I just read it. Verse 17 in the book of Judges. I'm still there. You're bowing down to other gods. You're bowing. You're a covenant breaker if you do that. God does not want us to bow down to idols. I'm going to highlight that for you. And we're still on Judges 2.17. I mean, I'll give you the scriptures. Read for yourself. Because that's what it all boils down to. is your decision. 2.17 reads again. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went a whoring. And that's why this Jenny, Pastor Jenny does. Call them whores all the time. Of the, of the other other gods and bow themselves unto them, they turn quickly out of the way of which their fathers commanded meant, commands commitment. I'm sorry. Fathers uh, walk, uh, walk in obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. So you fail to obey the commandments of the Lord. The one of the commandments you have served no other gods before him. God is jealous. 
Elohim is jealous. We are not to worship any of all these temples. We are not supposed to worship these other gods. You are not supposed to be an atheist. You are not supposed to be. That's a, that's a religion in all itself. That it is. And, and, and worshiping all these pagan gods. And you call yourself a witch. And you are supposed to be a child of God. God made you in his image. Not the witches. But it is what it is. I have to separate myself with, from you. I can't go fishing with you no more. I can't do it. I can't go to the park with you no more. I got to go to the park with my my brother, my brothers and sisters, and who are who are in right standing, who are in covenant with me in this walk. Okay, I can't do this. I can't travel with you no more. I have to leave certain people alone because of their lifestyle. Not saying I don't love them. I still love them. I still respect them, but sometimes you got to break away and call it a day. And that's how it is. You know, a crab will love for you to stick around because they love pulling you down. They want you to fail. Third, number five, turning quickly out of the way of the way. And that's what we have just covered over. You know, a lot of us turn quickly. To follow other directions. Turn away from way of righteousness. We're still in Judges 2.17. I mean we're still falling sh short. Falling totally separating ourselves from God. Because that's what it is. Well, that's exactly what we're doing guys. We are totally separating ourselves from God. And we're being totally beguiled. By the works of of darkness and the word darkness it's being it's total separation from him and that's Christ in whom Christ crucified we're separating from the son of God we're separating ourselves from God of heaven the father who sent his only begotten son we got to get it right we need to get it right here first the church individual call us got to get this stuff right got to get in this word and see for what it is means. Look it up. Understand it. Study it. And then once you come to understand and it makes sense, don't let culture ex confuse you. Don't let some idea, idea well, we're going to do a new form of worship. Don't you dare. Because it's going to take you out of focus. Turn that music off. Get into the word. Stop taking so much time and calling it praise. What you're only doing is what is distract. In my view, it's distraction, and it really is to me. I want to get the word. I want the whole thing. I don't want a form of worship by man. I want a form of worship that only comes from the scriptures. That's what I want. If you don't want that, that's not okay. I don't. I don't. Hey, I. We're cool. I just got to be in my own side. That's why denominations like that, because you know people break away and. Follow a path that's totally different from the other. So, we cover making leagues with heathens. We forced reason to destroy the altar. We looked, we covered immoral acts to idols, United States of America and Canada and the rest of the world. Bowing down to bowing to gods, turning quickly over from the way, which is the way of righteousness, the drew them the way. Breaking the commandments. And we're doing that too. That's still on 217. We break, we're, co we're covenant breakers. We're breaking the covenant with the promises. And you already spoken right here. If I start with 11, it's going to make you mad. Because you are the people already forsaken the covenant. And provoked the Lord. Worshiping Baal and Ashtar, bro. And God has taken you out of a lot of mess. And you still go back to it. The God, the Lord, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah, has delivered, sent judges to deliver you from your errors. And yet, once their deliverer has delivered you out of your errors... You, the meaning, the people of Israel still make the decision to go right back to those errors. 
Start worshiping those idols. Breaking the covenant that God has made with each and every one of us. We break the covenant that was handed down through Moses. And yet, we still breaking covenants. And soon enough, God's going to take his hand, which he already had here, but took his hands away. And then a lot of times he had to send somebody else to put his, be our interceder, intercess before us in our behalf. Them judges were that middle person that intercess before us and God and judgment. The Lord Elohim sent his only begotten son to take on the punishment that we deserve. He took on every bit of the broke law of the punishment that we deserve to be punished for. And yet, after all that, died and rose again, we went back to those bales and false religion. And went back to Satan. Went back to evil. And worship idols all over again. And I'm here to tell you. The Messiah has already died once. He's not going to die twice. He lives forever and ever along with the Father. Sitting in the right hand of the Father. Intercessing before our behalf. As a teaching behind that. You'll get that one day. 217 violence, we break the commandments of God. That's a covenant. The commandments is a covenant. So, how do I know? Let's go back to 17 again. I'm reading it. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods. Come on, United States. And bow themselves unto them that turn quickly out of the way which their father walked in and obeying the commandments who and obeying the command and obey comma obeying the commandment of the Lord talking about their father forefathers they're the ones who obey the commandments of the Lord they were the covenant but they did not so and he's talking about the people right in there at that time who were covenant breakers who went back to to worshiping idols they broke the covenant. They, they, they disemboweled the commandments of God, just like right now. United States, many of you disemboweled the commandments of God right now. You're doing it through your job. You're doing it through your association. You're doing it through a lot of things. And it's hard to be a Christian. It's very hard. But the reward is out of this world. I have to tell you, that's my opinion. Some things are worth more than others. I have to disembowel my association with a lot of people. If you want to associate with me, you have to come on to me. You got to come to me. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to go where you go. If you don't go where I go, then that's okay too. I'm okay with that. If you don't, if you don't believe in the scriptures, we have very little or nothing to talk about. If you're a service member in this uniform, who's serving this or serving the army freedom ain't free guys if you don't can't talk about that and I'm not going to stay all day on this because I'll soon later I'm going to start talking about the Lord and you don't want to hear that I'm going to shake off the dust and leave you alone it's that simple maybe it's too complicated I don't know Maybe simple to it's simple to me I don't know I, I, I wrestle with it all the time. All right. Now we have the opportunity to go to another verse. Because we stood a lot of times right here in Judges 2.17. Even though I started off with 2.15 to 2.18, we now have an opportunity to go to 2.19. They corrupt them, they corrupting themselves. In other words, as we would say, corrupt themselves. Let me see here. As one of selections. It's easy to get corrupted. It's easy to get confused. It's easy to be beguiled. And I mean totally to be deceived. 
if you're not rooted in the commandments. 219, this is going to be pretty quick compared to what I normally do. You know, it's, it's hot. Is it me? Is it hot outside? 80 degrees, brothers and sisters. Something to look forward to. Enjoy. Springtime. So, I'm going to go to 219. I already read up to 218. And the word of God reads this way. And it says, And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and we corrupt themselves more than their fathers and follow other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them they ceased not from their own doing nor from their stubborn ways meaning stubbornness they won't stop. They will have to, to after the judges that God has sent to help the people get back on track. Now, if you don't want to believe the judges that's written in this this books, what makes you think you're gonna to listen to me? If you don't believe in not one of these words in here, if you don't believe not one two of this word that's been written in this book, then there's no way I can tell I couldn't talk to you. I can't help you because you're not you locked up in your own box saying I don't want to hear I don't want to see and I don't want to talk and then guess what we don't have a conversation that's pretty much it there's no salvation I can, I can share with you because you don't want to hear what the spirit has to say so guess what the people after the judge the last judge died the people went right back to whoring getting right back to horn with idols and pagan gods and you know what in the United States you're doing it you get a blessing after the first world war the second world war you became an economic powerhouse your whole country was tight your military was great and people were bowing down before God but as soon as the virus hit in 1918, when they said God is no longer prevalent in governments, uh, we don't need, we're no longer a Christian nation, the downfall, that's when the virus started to spread. And that virus is sin. Some people say it. Many of the prophecies have been started and fulfillment back in 1914. I say 1918. Which could be 1914, which led to the decision of 1918. Because that's another story. I can't talk about 1918 right now because you wouldn't understand what I mean. But the world changed after the First World War. And a lot of nations became powerhouse as a benefit. And now they had economic turmoil. A lot of nations in World War II became a superpower. Now, here comes the downfall. Because we've been spoiled. We got so fat and spoiled by the spoiler that we no longer find God relevant. I'm telling you, I've been attacked on so many social medias. I have I didn't I don't believe in debate. I believe telling it like it is and leave it at that. You either accept or reject. A lot of conversations I just couldn't have with people because they're not reasonable. People are by nature are not reasonable. Sinners by nature are not reasonable. They're murderous dogs. That's just how it is. But the redemption blood. We don't need the blood of a lamb uh, to be marked on your door. We don't need blood sacrifice anymore. The blood of the lamb of God was already was crucified and bled took all the sins for you and many of you are still disemboweling what this man has done on the cross on the crucifix or the tree he died and rose again and will come back for a congregation without 
any spot or wrinkle, just like that uh, heifer cow. That heifer cow shall not have a spot or wrinkle on it or any infirmities. You'd be perfect for sacrifice. We got to be like that lamb or like that heifer cow that is without blemish, okay? We got to be like that. Because tomorrow is not promised. Any given day, judgment going to be upon us. Do you want to take that kind of chance with judgment? Do you want to take that kind of chance to say, I don't believe in Elohim, God. I don't believe this worthless book called the Bible. I don't believe this fairy tale that you're talking about. All this stuff, a 2,000 year lie. I don't want to hear it. You want to take that chance, Airborne? Do you want to take that chance between heaven and earth? Do you want to take that chance between salvation in heaven and on heaven and earth and hell, which is uh, the lake of fire with the lake of fire? Do you want to take that chance of eternal term torment for the rest of your days and your existence? Do you want to take that chance? Think carefully on your decision. And many of you are living in sin like I share with you. It's one thing to make mistake. Oops, I'm screwed up. I didn't know I was living like this. And I want to get it right, Pastor Arnold. I want to get it right. I want to get back in relationship with God. I want to get. I want to know about this Jesus Christ that you've been beseeching me to hear about so much, because I never heard of him before. Who is this Elohim? Who is his Father? What is this all about? I'd be more happy. I'd be more than happy to sit with you. I will be honored to sit with you if you have an open mind. Okay. Because the time of the, the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And where God is calling us to repent, ladies and gentlemen. United States, we call to repent. I'm calling the United States to repent. I'm calling pastors and elders and ministers in the modern United States to repentance. I'm calling all the individual churches to repentance. I'm not talking about the building. The building's not alive. The building just exists. I'm talking about living, breathing churches. Who confess Jesus Christ as Lord. I'm calling you to repentance. I'm calling you to repentance. I want to see the United States get back to a country that loves God more than anything else. Because I'm telling you, we're like a few weeks and if not months from eternity. You make the choice. Free will is free. What I've done wasn't free. What my brothers have done wasn't free. But the free will is. That's what God gave us. You make the choice. You make the choice. Stop corrupting yourself. Verse 19 again. And it came to pass when the judges were dead that they return and corrupt themselves more than their fathers. You guys are far worse than your great grandfather and your grandmother and your great grandfather. This nation is far worse than it was ever before. And y'all just don't see it. Economies is terrible. Gas prices are high. Food prices are high. Daycare is ex exorbitantly expensive or a uh, premium, as we say. It's everything has gone to a premium mode. The house market, house market. I mean, homes that cost. $300,000 today, well, yesterday cost almost a million dollars today. And a lot of you can't afford it. $20,000, $20 an uh, uh, hour is not going to do it. And when somebody dictates how many hours you work, you'll never get there. You will never get there. I'll cut you out. I'm sorry. I got to cut your hours. What? I was on my way to making enough to afford this house. I can't afford it no more. Guess what? Your rent's going up to $4,000 a month. How's that sound for you? We got to get ourselves right standing before God and bending knees and calling on Him and asking for forgiveness for everything we've done. All, of the, all the stuff I've mentioned is human behaviors. You got any hate in your heart? Repent from it now. You got any lust in your house? Get out of there. 
murder, plotting to murder. If you plotted to commit a crime or murder, repent right now. If you're plotting to rape somebody, repent right now. If you're plotting to defy God or to deform to, to deceive others, you need to get on your knees and repent right now before you do it. And even after you do it, repent and make things right with the victim that you have hurt. Not tomorrow, today. United Nations and the United States and Europe, and I'm calling it like it is like a prophet, true prophet called it. It's not about no car you get tomorrow. It's, prop, it's about salvation. We got to get back to preaching the gospel of truth. We got to get back to, I'm talking to you pastors, and I'm talking to you elders, and I'm talking to you deacons, and I'm talking to all of you. We got to get back to basic, fundamental a gospel. We've complicated it. Each and every one of us, and I mean myself, including myself, have made it more complicated than necessary. Plus, Paul come back, he'll never recognize this Christianity that we call it. A lot of the early apostles would not recognize this place. A lot of early Christians were like, you call yourself what? The call out you to call himself fishers of men. They call themselves believers. They were still Jews. So they're like, what in the world? Who are you? They had fish as a symbol of identity. Not an execution chamber. Fish. That's how the early Christians identified themselves. Not a cross. Not a rosary. They had a fish. We can no longer make leagues with the devil. Judges chapter 219 states, and I'm going to get to that point where it says, where, 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 I'm going to read it again. Coming following other gods, bowing, bowing to gods. Let me go, that's another topic. Bowing to gods. And I'm talking about those little, little gods. We have no business bowing down to. Many of you are bowing to gods. By your actions. I want affirmative action with abortion. And I want LGBTQ. And I want equality. There's nothing equality here. So it's that come unto me. Follow me. Jesus never compromised. I'm telling you, y'all never know y'all gonna get this self type of information. You corrupt themselves, break the commandments, serving gods. You're bowing down to gods. And that's not what God wants. God is, Elohim is sovereign. And we're bowing down to gods. I'm talking about the United States. 2.17 says, I mean, I already covered it. We're bowing down to gods and we're serving gods. Let me say, I meant serving gods. I'm sorry. Serving God. You're, you're already gone back from on your way to purity to now back to, to corruptions. Judge 2.19. Y'all read that again and again and again. That's my challenge to you. And then you go to chapter 3 of Judges, verse 6. So let's go to chapter 3, verse 6. And it said, they took their daughters to their, by two daughters to be their wives. And gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. Now who are these people? Well, let's go, we got to, in order to understand that, you got to go to verse 5. And it said, and the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites. The Pharisees and the Hethites, no, Hethites, and the what? 
the Jebusites. And they took on their daughters. That means they got married. They took upon their daughters. They took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and their gods. So the Israelites associate themselves with non-believers. The Israelites disobeyed God, broke the covenant. They assembled with the unbelievers, pagan worshipers. And they, their, the sons married the daughters of these people. And their daughters married their sons of these people. And then they served their gods. United States of American people are doing that every day. Your children have gone from righteousness to wickedness every day. Many of our children reject Elohim, the word of God. And reject the total truth. Sign up for false religions. Sign up with pagan religions. Sign up with other religions. That has nothing to do with the Messiah, the one and true Messiah. And that's Yeshua, I'm sure. The Lamb of God. So what are we supposed to do, guys? I already told you. Get back to right standing before Elohim. And ask Jesus for forgiveness. Because this is not the intentions of God. And I'm going to read verse 7 on Judges chapter 3. Verse 7 says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and for, forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. Serve LGBTQ, you serve abortions, you serve, oh, oh well, we run affirmative actions. God don't care about your affirmative actions. You achieved that already. He, he don't care about your rights. He don't care about your privileges. He don't care about your environmentalist ways. He don't care about your climate change. All that's God's. All those little gods that you bow down for. And you're going to block up the streets of Richmond, Virginia for. Committing such blasphemy. If you want to do anything, you should all assemble together and ask God for forgiveness. And connect yourself with a teaching pastor and a teaching congregation. That's going to be seen, feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's scripture, guys. Because we're on our way to a slippery slope and the United States is no longer going to be on top. I'm here to tell you that. We're going to get hit from the east and from the kingdom of the north, which is the Soviet Union. And the one from the east is China. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Serving God's. And your selfishness. Many of you are selfish by nature. And God does not honor selfishness. He don't like stubbornness. Selfishness is a sin. I do my best not to live a life of selfishness. I'm sure I always thrive to live my life as transparent as possible. And live in a godly lifestyle to the best of my abilities. Many of you not even trying. Many of you don't even care. But I do. Selfishness 219. And it states right here in the word of God. And God addressing through his judges our shortfall. And it said, it came to pass when the judge was dead, that they returned and, de and corrupt themselves more than their what? Fathers. Generations. And follow other gods to serve them. And he bowed down unto them. They ceased not from their own doing, nor from their stubborn ways. 
your stubborn ways is what's going to cause you massive turmoil. Your stubborn ways is going to cause you your iniquity to be irreversible. Your sins. Your stubborn ways is going to also cause you to fall into contempt and not be forgiven. We got to, as a nation of people of God, true God, need as much cease this false religious ways, turn from wickedness, turn from everything that I have just so far mentioned in this outline. Your behavior is going to have to change. Your thinking will have to change. We, first of all, the simplest thing to do is to repent. Simplest thing is to get back in God's will. Verse 7, number 7, number, and the last one talks about stubbornness and commandment. To go back to 217 because they're going to keep on reminding God is going to continue to remind us. And he reminds us this way. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. Y'all don't even hearken unto my, the words I give as a pastor or as a bishop or as an elder. Yes, I meet all those qualifications including chaplain. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them, and they turned quickly out of the way of which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, which they did. But they did not, talking about the generation behind them, the children. You disavow proper characteristics, proper behaviors, proper morals, and turn them into immorals. And the Lord Elohim, God Almighty, El Shaddai, is not pleased with the United States. Not pleased with the nation, which is you too. It's time to stop playing religion. It's stop playing hierarchy. And stop playing Book of Order, uh, all these different lo other laws that have nothing to do with Scripture. And get back to the basic principles of Scriptures and righteous living. And living with love, not love of the modern age. God cared nothing about that modern age stuff. Elohim hell, no, does not care about that. I read unto you, brothers and sisters, the ten each day, each opportunity that I give you, I give you ten sins that God does not like, and many of us, the Americans, are committing every day, and by the face judgment. God's judgment is real. And he's going to judge us based on the principles of things I have already read unto you. So let's ask God for forgiveness. And turn from our evil ways. Be bound and connected to a fruit of the spirit. And a fruit of a loving com com uh, commissioned um, ministry or church congregation of people that's assembled together that's living righteously. Find their, your place there. Find your place. But find seek ye first the kingdom of God. Don't look for noise. Don't look for shouts. Look for the scriptures. If you find one that's devoted to scriptures and that's it, then your wealth, you wealth, you you you're in good hands. If you're in there with a lot of noise, a lot of boom, 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 and a lot of K K K K K. A lot of who, 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 get out of there. Because their minds were somewhere else. And the early churches didn't do it. There's too many documentation how the church, the earlier church worship. They were in the scriptures. And I had a chance to fellowship with an organization that the oldest, the oldest church in the land. The oldest 
organization of people. And that's the Orthodox Church. It's amazing. The people are quite interesting. I mean, and I have friends who are Catholics too. And they look at things a lot different, guys, than what we Baptist, Free Will, Pentecostal, Methodist, and Methodist, and uh, Presbyterian look at. But I'm more leaning toward the Orthodox ways because they're in that scripture. And that's it. They don't need no statues. They don't need a whole bunch of other stuff. All they need is the Word of God. You know, they may have a few pictures here and there to represent those who have done some great work, but that's it. No statues. They have none whatsoever. No images. But anyway, that's another story. But anyway, guys, I thank you for each and every one for you to chime on in as we discuss sin in our age and how sin is destroying the land and how sin is destroying you. God loves you. He wants the best for you. I mean, and, 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 and like I said, we have to get it right. Even I do. And this is my way of doing it. So seek ye first the kingdom of he heaven and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. But if you don't, you're saying to lose everything. And it's not worth it. If you And stop supporting satanic things. Stop supporting LGBTQs 100%. Stop supporting that. Stop affiliating yourself with evildoers. That's not in this line of the scripture. Stop supporting um, politicians who support abortion. Don't support abortion. If you have a child on wet, there's always adoption. There's always adoption. There's many ways to this thing that can make it right. Okay? But murder... Of a, fee, of, of a baby is, is just not what we do. I mean, nobody murdered you. Why you have, and why are you taking advantage of, of a system of murderers? God's going to condemn you for that. There's no walking away from it. Repent and don't do it again means exactly what it said. And don't you, that means don't, not to promote it. Okay? If y'all are in these church organizations that's worshiping Baal, and doing all sorts of paganistic dancing. Get out of there. And then pastor if you're doing it. Stop doing it. Get to the scriptures. Look back in the last 500 years. And you ask me. Do these people do what you do now? Look back the last thousand years. Have these people doing what you're doing now? Don't believe it. Go to Ethiopia. They still practice the same old way. Go to the Eastern Orthodox land. Go to Ukraine. Go to the uh, Greeks. Greek. Uh, go to uh, Eastern Europe. They're not going to Western Europe. They're not doing all that stuff. You only American, Black Americans doing that. And many people who beguiled in in parts of Africa. And many Africans are tightening up too. Get it right. I'm not going to do those things that y'all do. I'm not going to do it. I'll give God praise in my own way. And that he understands. Action speaks louder than words. In the meantime, let us pray. Father, on the most high Jehovah, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, your son. We ask, Lord, dear Lord God, that you will continue to embold us to speak boldly the word of truth. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity through social media to have a platform like a television show to share what we come to understand, what the word is saying. To give warning to the, to the nation, to set the captives free. We ask, Lord, that you would give us wisdom on how we shall lead your people. Lord God, we ask that... The, that that the people who are called by your name will be humbled and pray. We ask for the, the prayer of humility of the United States of America. We want the United States to be a prosperous nation, not just from without, but from within. We ask for many nations to be as prosperous, Mexico, Tijuana, uh, 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 El Salvador, and in places like uh, Honduras, Germany, Ukraine, Russia. We, we want all the nations to turn from their wicked ways and live a godly lifestyle. And we're also, Lord, but, but they have to repent and turn 
from wrong to right, to from sin of darkness to light. We ask, Lord, that you will take them to the light. It's not about no hairstyle. It's not about no jumping up and down. It's not about doing backflips and cartwheels. It's not about my neighbor because my neighbor can't do a thing for me, but I ask him to pray. And that's about it. Only you, Lord, who sees all, who lives all, and through you all, Lord, we ask for your divine mercy and grace. Help us in our areas of weakness. Help us, Lord, in our area of our morale weakness. And strengthen us, Lord, where we be strong to stand against the evil wiles of Satan. And be able to withstand those fiery dots that's coming from these evil works of Satan. Lord, we ask for the deliverance through the word. And the word only. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, guys, if you receive this prayer and receive what I have just shared, please like, share, and subscribe, and share it with as many people as possible. Seek the scriptures for yourself. And also to help me spread the word, I ask again, please share my book. We are living in the finished work of Christ. And I got so many up here. <laughs> Amen. Hurricane Katrina and I sharing my story, my testimony of my military experience and breaking the chain of bondage of the tradition of the church. Please support this ministry. We appreciate it. We love each and every one of you. And then we get together. You buy a book. Get together. I will be gladly sign a copy for you. And again, thank you for time for your time. As we continue to do the mission that we are all called to do. And that is the gospel of truth through Jesus Christ. Through the Father, who's the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you. And may have a smile upon you. This is Reverend Dr. Antonio Arnold. It is now 9.10. I think we're only long enough. At 1 hour and 47 minutes on a Wednesday night, March 14th, on the spring. And it's 80 degrees today, 65 miles. God bless you and may have a smile upon you. Until next time, we'll see you later.